Hey student, in this video we are going to study old exam paper, calculus 102, which cover exercise 6.3, 6.5, 7.1 to 7.8. So let us start. So first question, this is from exercise 7.2. Here we have to solve this integral and clearly this is uh, trigonometric integral and here we need because both functions does not have the same angle so we need a formula trigonometric identity this one to sine a cosine b is equal to there's the sum of sine so our integral is this one if you look at here here a and b are 7x and x respectively so we will plug in the formula so we have this integral a simple one so you have to just integrate sine 8x and sine 6x its answers are this one so first option is the answer second question this is from exercise 6.3 the volume of a solid obtained by rotating the region closed by this one so 6.3 cover cylindrical shell method so first we have to draw this is the picture what we have we have to rotate this one about y axis. So, y axis is a vertical line in cylindrical shell method. So, our formula is this one in which integration will be with respect to x because line of rotation is vertical. So, we have to fill just uh, radius and height. So, on the diagram, you can see this is the radius, this is just the x direction of the curve. So, this is x. And this is the height, this is the y direction, so y component of the curve. So our formula takes this form. So x and y, but integration is with respect to x, that's why we have to change this y in terms of x. Y is equal to 3 sine x. So this will become this then. So now we have this integral. So this will be solved by integration by parts. So let us solve it without limit. So u will be x and dv will be sin x dx. So the, by differentiating u, you will get du. Then by integrating dv, you will get v. So this is the formula. If we plug everything in the formula, so our integral will have this form. And cosine x integration, you know, is just sin x. So this is without limit. So our answer is this one. We have now you fundamental theorem of calculus. To plug upper minus lower limit so this will take this form by lower limit everything will be zero so the answer after this this will be and this is just six pi square so the first option next question so this is just a partial fraction this is from exercise 7.4 so you have to just simplify use a basic algebra so if you cross multiply so you will end up with this form then you can do simplification so now i can compare the coefficients of x power so coefficient of x square give me this expression coefficient of x power give me this equation and then constant term give me this so three equations are enough to get the value of a b and c so if you add all these three so you will end up this one and this will give you a equal one now you will replug the value in the first equation you will get b0 and c equal 2 so our target to find a 2a plus b plus c so this is equal 4 so first option again now question number 4 here average value of the function you have to find this is from exercise 6.5 the average value of the function the function is continuous so on a closed interval a b have this integral we have to plug everything in this formula so our expression is this one so this is what we have to integrate so if you do little more simplification you have this form now you can use the identity this one to sine square theta this is equal to 1 minus cos 2 theta so if you plug here so you will end up with these two these two terms you have to integrate the integration of 1 is just theta and cosine 8 theta integration will be sine 8 theta over 8 from 0 to pi by 4 apply plugging upper and lower limit you will end up with one so option a again is the answer Question number five 
the arc length of a curve. This is from exercise 8.1. The formula for the arc length is this one. If we use the direction dx for integration. So why we are using dx for integration? Because everything is uh, in the direction of x is given. Limits are given. So that's why we are choosing this one. Now if you plug everything here from the equation y equal to 3 plus cosine hyperbolic x. If you differentiate you will end up with this one. And this is by identity equal to cosine hyperbolic square. And square will cancel the square root. So you will end up with this one. Again, you use the identity cosine hyperbole, sorry, integration. So you will get sine hyperbolic from 0 to plane 2. And you will plug up per minus lower limit. You will have this expression. So you can take simplify. Otherwise, you may use the exponential expression. This one. So this will end up with the 2 minus half. And if you further simplify, you will get 3 over 4. So the answer for question number 5. Okay, question number 6 is from section 7.3. This is about trigonometric substitution. So you will have x square plus 1. So you will put x equal to a tangent. Theta is 1. So no need to plug a. And so differentiation is this one. If you plug everything in the integral, you will end up this one. Then you use the identity. Then you square theta plus 1 equal to secant square theta. So this will give you this expression. Simple algebra will give us just secant theta. And the integral of a secant theta, you should know this is ln secant theta plus tangent theta. Now we have to plug the value of uh, secant theta and tangent theta. So we will use this expression. Tangent theta is given. And if you use right triangle, this one angle is theta. Tangent theta is perpendicular over base. So then by Pythagoras theorem, you will end up with this one. So from this, you can get the value of secant theta. So this is what the final answer, ln absolute value square root x square plus 1 plus x and plus c for constant of integration. So again, option A is answer. Question number 7. So this is again a trigonometric integral. Let us solve first without limit. So here, tangent has even value. Secant has even value, but for tangent, we look for its odd value. So, secant even value, we will consider, we will break secant into secant square and secant square. So, then we will convert this secant to a tangent. So, you will have this expression. Then, we can use just substitution. If you put tangent theta equal to u, then du is secant square theta d theta. So you will end up this just simple polynomial and you further simplify. Yes, you have to integrate u8 plus u6 power. Its integration is very simple. Yes, by power rule, u9 over 9 plus u7 over 7. And the limits are from minus 1 to 0. So by plugging upper limit, you will end up with 0. By plugging lower limit, you will get this expression and this will give you 16 over 9. So option A again. Question number 8. So here, this integral is all without limit first. Here you have to do some modification because it looks like a substitution, but after some modification. Yes. Uh, this can be written like this one. Then if you multiply and divide by 2, so you can see 2 is outside by multiplication and the division 1 over 2, I have shifted to the numerator. So then you use the property of the logarithm. So it will end up with this expression. Yes. Now if you do substitution, just plug u equal to the square root x. So du will be this one. And by plugging in the integral, this will end up with this expression. Lane view integration, you should know. Let us solve by integration by part. What is lane x integration? Lane x. So you have to choose u as ln x, dv will be dx, then this is the du and this v. By plugging everything in this formula, we will end up with this one and this gives you x ln x minus x. So in our question, so this is what we have from 1 to e. Uh, by plugging upper and lower limit, you will end up with this expression. And uh, this is simple. 
So to simplify, you will get a equal 12. So option A is the answer. Now question number 9. Again from 6.3, so equal shell method, you have to write the expression. So look at the diagram. This is the diagram. Blue line is x equal to 0. Red line is the given curve. And line of rotation, green line is the line of rotation at minus 1. So line of rotation is horizontal. That's why integration will be along y direction. So this is our formula. 0 to 1 in the direction of y. Now we have to plug radius and height. So radius is along y direction. This one is just a y component of the curve. And height is horizontal. Thickness of the region. So this is just x. So we end up with this one. But integration is with respect to y. So we have to replug the value of x. So if you plug the value of x from the curve, you will end up with this expression. Simplification gives you this one. And this is just option B. So option B is a correct answer. Question number 10. This is partial fraction. You have to use partial fraction to me because this is a rational expression. But before that, because you can see denominator is 6 degree. You will first do sim, uh, substitution. Substitute u equal x cube. Then du is this one. This is you clearly see in the numerator. So we have this integral and the denominator is now just a quadratic expression you can easily make two factors 2 plus 1 you plus 2 now you need a partial fraction you have you can split in two parts now we need a cross multiply you will end up this one so further if you compare the coefficient of like powers of u you will end up with these two equation if you subtract these two you clearly see you will get b equal to 1 this will give you a equal to minus 1 so our integral has to 1 so denominator in both integrals are just a linear power of the variable so answer will be in terms of logarithm so ln u plus 2 plus uh, ln u plus 1 yes there should be first term should be negative so then with the property of a logarithm you can write in a fractional form so if you replug the value of u you will end up this answer which is option a Question number 11, so it's an improper integral from section 7.8, we have given that integral has an answer, so we have this equation, we just need to find the value of r. So on the left side, the procedure to solve an improper integral, is this one we make a use of a limit, limit t goes to infinity, 1 to t, this one, and this is just a power expression, its integration is very easy, polynomial expression, so this is the integration and uh, this is the equation so now if i plug upper and the lower limit you will end up with these two expressions and uh, limit is of, uh, effective on just t variable so second term is uh, meaningless with respect to the limit so you will shift uh, or you may cross multiply r plus one to make it more simple so you will end up with this expression so on the left hand side, this is the only expression, limit t goes to infinity, so we have to need some care, t power r plus 1. So you see, in the question, we have given that integral has an answer. If you look at this integral, this integral may have two different answers. One answer infinity, if r is positive, and one answer is 0, if r is negative. If r is positive, then integral uh, then answer is infinity so integral will be divergent but we have given that integral has answer so we will consider the second case so answer is 0 r is negative so then you solve this simple equation so further simplification will be this one so you will end up this answer so option a is the answer question number 12 this is from exercise section 7.4 so this is a tangent substitution your substitution is given you have this integral so t you will consider this one so dx will be 2 over 1 plus t square after plugging the value of the secant square other values which we need we need sine x and tangent x sine x will be y right triangle so you will get this one cosine will be this one and this is just half angle from here if you use a trigonometric identity double, double angle you will end up sine x 
and cosine x and if you divide these two you will get tangent x you have to plug everything in the expression and you need basic algebra to simplify this one so we end up with this expression so further simplification if you take 2t common then if you do the lcm in the inside the bracket you will end up with this expression now you see 1 plus t square can be cancelled 2 can be cancelled 1 will be cancelled by sorry minus t square inside the bracket cancelled by t square so you will have this expression you can split you will end up with these two integral simple integral first has answer in terms of lane second is the polynomial so replug the value of t you will end up with this one this is the answer this is option a now question number 13 this is improper integral again from section 7.8 so here you can first write in terms of limit now if you do substitution this integral can be solved yes u equal 1 over x so du will be this one you have to adjust minus 1 so you will and upper and lower limit will be changed so you will end up this expression and exponential number has same antiderivative so you have to use fundamental theorem of calculus by upper and lower limit and limit will not affect the upper limit it will affect the lower limit and you clearly see if you plug t for 0 you will end up e to the power infinity so this is infinity so divergent so option a is answer now question number 14 this is trigonometric substitution again section 7.3 you can rearrange like this one then because you need a constant term explicitly and a variable term so you have to complete the square inside the bracket so i can plug plus one and minus one inside the bracket so first three term is a square of x minus one and second term last term is minus one outside minus make it positive so you can write it like this one so this is one minus constant minus the variable expression our variable is x minus one so you will plug constant times sine theta constant is one no need to write that so dx will be cos theta d theta plug everything here so you will end up this one simple identity give you this expression and 2 cos square theta in is equal to 1 plus cos 2 theta so again you will have two term as an answer this is without limit now we have to plug the value of theta so from the substitution if you plug at lower limit x equal to 1 so theta will be 0 sine inverse 0 0 if you plug x equal 3 over 2 theta will be 5 by 6 you can really check so by fundamental theorem of calculus so our integral has answered this one so first plug upper limit minus lower limit so this will end up this expression and this simplification gives you this one so this is the final answer now move to question number 15 the last question this is simple integration by parts you can solve exercise 7.1 question so you will be a polynomial we will be cosine hyperbolic x if you differentiate u you will get this one and if you integrate v you will end up with this expression this is a formula if i plug everything in the formula simple one more time integration by parts this time u will be x dv will be this one so du equals just dx v is cosine hyperbolic again use the formula so we have three term and cosine hyperbolic antiderivative is sine hyperbolic so this is the answer then you collect the term involving sine hyperbolic x so option a is the answer this is the final answer uh, hope you enjoy thank you very much also subscribe the channel